I finally installed the uh, piston onto the shaft. Uh, and one thing I neglected to mention last time is using this special tool that I made, uh, which is just a piece of metal that I bent and ground so that it fits underneath the crank pin because there's a little bit of offset between this pin and the axis of the shaft that goes through here. So uh, as, I'm, as I was installing the bearing on, you do want to support it there. So that's what I've done. And this thing removes like so. Anyhow, so the piston is now on the crank pin. And uh, what we're going to do now is install the uh, little rings, the piston ring here. There are actually two of them. And then uh, install the motor onto the compressor. Uh, but before we do that, we have to install the circlip or snap ring. And the circlip has two sides. It has kind of a rounded over side and a flat side. And the flat side always goes toward whatever element that can be actually pushing on the circlip. And in this case, it's gonna be the bearing. So that's how we're gonna install it. Before we install the motor onto the body of the compressor, I wanted to trim off these really sharp cable ties. Because these things can really cause some damage. So we're gonna cut them off flush. These are flush cutters. Uh, also, I removed this fan because we had to position the motor like this to kind of be the uh, connecting rod on. So we need to reinstall that. Okay, so we're gonna use a little bit of Loctite clean and prime on these threads. So this is uh, the 222 thread locker that's not very strong at all. It's important to have a well-fitting screwdriver. Before we install the motor, I want to uh, install the piston rings. This type of compressor is supposed to be oil-less, but there is some lubricant that this uh, assembly does need, I think. The lubricant I like to use is this dry lube, and what we're going to do is we're going to spray a little bit in this container. And then I'm going to first apply it into the groove of the piston. Because the, the rings are going to move there, and hopefully they can find a little bit of lubrication in the groove. And this lube dries very quickly. I'm going to apply a little bit of lube to the ring itself. This is just made out of silicone rubber, I believe. Let it dry. And then the second piston ring. I'm gonna apply a little bit of loop to the outside, to the inside and the edges. I'm gonna put the inner ring on and get it to the bottom. I'm trying to make sure that it's not twisted. Okay, and then the outer ring. Like this. What I forgot to do is install this cover here. 
always a good idea to have a little bit of grease on these threads. Finally, we can install uh, the motor. Oh boy. Let's not forget that this thing is magnetic. Two more. And the last one. The reason it's a good idea to have Loctite here, and the factory puts them on, you could tell when you take it apart, but this thing vibrates pretty hard, so. A little bit of extra security doesn't hurt. Gonna go in a crisscross pattern. These are JIS screwdrivers, by the way, so they fit these uh, screws really well. Okay, that's good enough. So what we're gonna do now is install the cylinder, and uh, I'm gonna start by installing this gasket and there's kind of you can kind of see there are two sides one has ribs and one is flat so the rib side goes up and that's because the piston has a rib side that used to face that way and to make sure that everything seals well I'm gonna use a little bit of sealing grease this is Molecote 111 so I'm gonna just coat this gasket with this grease. It does a couple of things. It provides a positive seal and also makes things easier when you have to disassemble. Okay? And so this gasket goes over like that gonna help this thing seat now there's a little bit we should probably have put this on before we put the rings on but that's okay you can very easily get this grease off the napkin Okay, and then, so next we're gonna put on the cylinder. And uh, 
it'll just kind of slip over the the piston let's see if the piston moves yeah it's just fine and we're gonna put a little bit of grease on the top of the piece basically there's a gasket in the head here but I don't want to put goop in there kind of hard to get to I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of grease as a thin layer on top of the cylinder here a q-tip to make sure that we don't have any inside okay and then so now we're gonna put the head on by the way notice that this particular compressor has a rubber hose between the cylinder and the tank most of the other ones I've seen have aluminum ones and from what I understand they break pretty easily part of the reason for that is because aluminum fatigues quickly so in my mind this is a much better approach just with a rubber hose okay so same thing we're gonna put a little bit of clean and prime on these screws a little bit of Loctite it's probably too much but we'll, that's okay we can share with another screw There's no need to over torque this. Looks like we're good to go. Let's see if our piston moves well. Yeah. That's telling us we have compression. So the rest uh, is pretty self explanatory. Just connect these leads. Before I do that, I'm going to put just a little bit of the CRC multi purpose lubricant. Just to prevent corrosion. Put a couple of cable ties, keep things tidy. And uh, next thing is gonna be, I'm gonna do another break-in procedure, perfectory manual, you're supposed to run this thing without a load for about 30 minutes, and we'll see how that goes.